The Atlanta Fed is one of the 12 banks that make up the U.S. Central Bank. Its job is to set monetary policy and make sure the economy stays on sound financial footing. Leading the Atlanta Fed is Rafael Bostic, and although he's firmly focused on the macro level, as a resident of Atlanta, he's also in tune to the local front, as you'll see in today's executive profiles. I grew up in a, a small town, a suburban town to uh, uh, Philadelphia, and was good in math and science and did all the stuff that you know smart kids do, take the AP classes and do that. And so uh, when I graduated, I really wanted to be a chemical engineer. Yeah. And so when I went to Harvard for undergrad, uh, first semester, I was in a, an advanced chemistry class. And I realized there were a couple things that happened there that kind of made it clear that that probably wasn't the right path for me. And so then I started looking for other things. Found psychology as a field and thought it was really interesting. And then wound up taking this econ class at my junior year and found that that was really interesting too. So I figured let me put them together. And, uh, and then that put me on a pathway to economics and where I am today. So you leave Cambridge. What did you do right after that? So I worked for a computer consulting firm called uh, SRA, mm -hmm. Systems Research and Applications. I did nothing with economics to start. I was a writer. So I wrote training materials for some emergency procedures that we did. We were consulting to, to the Defense Department and to FEMA. At the very end of that, I wound up being a cost tracker for one of their big contracting projects. Uh, and then I decided I needed to go do something else, so get, a, get an advanced degree. Uh, applied for a PhD at Stanford and I went back, went out west. And then from there, that took you into the the world of, uh, I, I guess, quasi-government, as I've heard the term be used for the Federal Reserve System. Did that take you? You went straight to the Federal Reserve System. After I did. That? So you know, it was interesting. Uh, graduate school was extremely difficult, and I almost didn't finish several times. I had some good mentors, and they helped me be really self-determined in terms of how I went through the program. So I actually discovered uh, research on. Uh, discrimination mortgage lending, mm -hmm. and it got, that really turned me into questions of how capital gets into neighborhoods and communities. And at the time, that's what the Fed was looking for, someone who was interested in that, a young person. So, uh, so I had never really thought about the Fed as a place to work, right. but it just so happened that the stuff I stumbled on as a graduate student aligned with the stuff that they were looking for in Washington, so that's how I got there. Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta is, uh, really has a really fascinating history uh, in the Federal Reserve System that I don't think a lot of people realize. Uh, in many ways, you've been on the forefront of a lot of key movements in, in the American banking system. Uh, what did you know about the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta when, before you got here, and what have you learned, and what have been some of the key learnings in your year and a half so far? Well, there are a couple things that I think really stand out. One is how we collect information. And so um, we have a network of people we call regional executives whose job it is to just drive around and meet with CEOs and talk to them for an hour, an hour and a half and get a sense of what they're feeling and seeing in terms of opportunities in the economy, but also risks and challenges. Uh, and we, we use that to supplement uh, all the national data that you get on GDP and unemployment and all that. Uh, and that's, that's really helpful because one thing that I think is true is that a lot of the trends in the economy happen well before they show up in the aggregate data. Right. And so if you can get some advanced clues that those things are happening, then you can proactively work to minimize any potential damage or downside that might happen in the economy. A second thing I would say that people don't know about Atlanta is that we, we run the retail payments office. Mm -hmm. So when you think about uh, transactions, anybody uh, uh, pays at Target or Walmart, um, they're basically, that transaction is basically a commitment to say, I'm authorizing Target's bank or Walmart's bank to take money out of my account and my bank. And if those banks are not the same, then there needs to be some reconciling function, and we provide a backbone that allows that to happen. So the Fed is actually present, and the Atlanta Fed in particular is present, in pretty much everyone's life every day. It's a fact. You're the first African-American president of, of, a, of a Federal Reserve Bank in, in our nation. How does that weigh on you? I mean, the fact that you, you are the first of something of this type, does, it, is that, does that put more pressure on you, or how do you deal with that type of recognition? So, you know, I try to ignore it as much as possible. Now, that's true. It's always going to be true, regardless of what I do. Uh, so my approach has really been to just try to be the president and do that well. And if I do that well, then that'll 
then the rest of the history will take care of itself. What do you think are maybe going to be the, the key things for Atlanta to do to become a thought leader in the world of affordable housing? You know, one, I think, is to really think hard about can we get affordable housing in every neighborhood? Uh, to make sure that uh, there aren't parts of Atlanta that don't work for anybody right. or everyone. Um, a second, I think, is really to think hard about how you leverage uh, the transit system, the MARTA, uh, and try to build density in strategic ways to get far more housing uh, built. You know, one of the challenges we have in affordability is that demand is outstripping supply in, right. in many regards. And so we need to make sure we're doing all we can on that supply side uh, to make things work. This place is moving, though. It's changing rapidly. I think even in the time I've been here, it's gotten considerably more expensive. And if you look around Midtown, where our bank is, yeah. all the stuff that's going up there is at the high, high end of the price points. And you can just see the, the, the tension starting to rise in a lot of families. Last week, the Atlanta Fed revised its second quarter GDP forecast from 1.6% to nearly 1%. The decision was based on weaker than expected retail sales for the month of April.